Welcome to Writer Talks, where you get to meet the winners of the short story contest at Two Sisters Writing and Publishing. Tonight is a very, very special show. I am Elizabeth Ann Atkins, one of the two sisters, and with us tonight, live from Sydney, Australia, we have... Warren Paul Glover. He is a dynamic, dynamic writer. He does screenplays, poetry, short stories. He does so many different things that I'm so excited to talk with you tonight, Warren. Welcome. Thank you. My pleasure to be on. <laughs> Thank you. So it's tomorrow in Australia. You're in Sydney, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> and you'll note that he has a British accent because he's from England. So, <laughs> Warren, I want to start by introducing you and hearing about how you got started in writing, what called you to this art craft, and what you love about it. Okay. Well, I, I used to dabble in poetry and short stories in my late teens and early 20s. Uh, and then um, I got sucked into university and the world of work and completely forgot about it for yeah, years and years and years. And then in 2009, uh, when I was living in London, um, we moved to, from London to Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, so I left my job in London and I'd started to revisit writing short stories at that point. And then when I got to Edinburgh, uh, what I planned to do was do a master's in global health and public policy at Edinburgh University. So we got to Edinburgh in the June the masters wasn't due to start until in September, so I had some free time to kill. So I looked up short courses that Edinburgh University um, offered, and there was one on writing short stories. There was one on writing poetry. There were a couple of screenwriting courses, um, and they were 11, 12 week courses. So I signed up to all of those, and then I got so captivated writing poems about avocados and wardrobes. And I, <laughs> Uh, crisis of um, conscience with with my intention to do the masters and figured out that actually my heart's not in it um, mm -hmm. uh, I'd spent 15 years in the health sector in London anyway and I thought actually I'm more interested in you know writing poems about avocados and wardrobes <laughs> okay and I was seduced by this whole thing about you know, I love films. You know, I've never even thought about writing a film before. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, I, you know, I know what a screenplay structure is. Yeah, you know, I, I understand what, you know, the three act structure, the conventions of screenwriting, thanks to these courses. Mm -hmm. so I thought, why not give this a bash instead? Yes, so that's what I did. I love it, and so very uniquely, you are also an actor. So you actually write screenplays, you write plays, and you're an actor. Can you talk about how you segued into that? Yeah, well, um, in when we were uh, in Scotland, I got asked to write a um, a short film for um, you know for this um, couple of guys who wanted to make this film. They had a story in mind. So I, uh, I wrote the story and then they said, oh, can you direct it as well? So, so, okay, I've never directed anything before. So I directed that. And that was the last thing I did in Scotland before moving to Australia. Then, then I started writing short plays when I got to Australia. And I had a short play called Falling for Harry, which mm -hmm. is my most, still my most successful short play. And it won a couple of um, short play contests. And but I had a problem with one of um, uh, the actors, and it didn't end well. And so I, I reflected on it. I thought oh, maybe I didn't fully appreciate the sensitivities of you know, what's involved in um, you know, acting on the stage. I thought there's only one way to do it uh, to understand that, and that's and that's to act myself. And I hadn't acted since I was at school. You know, mm. I was the lead in Joseph and his amazing technical dream coat. Oh. Yeah, that was a long time ago. So I thought, <laughs> right, yeah, I'm writing, I'm directing. I might as well go the whole hog and act as well. So, so that's what I did. Um, oh. Yeah, I, so I started acting in, in short films and short plays, and then been a couple of feature films, been in an opera. Um, uh, opera? 
Yeah, I played six roles in an opera uh, called Whiteley last year about the Australian artist, Brett Whiteley. Uh, so, that, so that was at the Sydney Opera House, um, 1500 uh, capacity uh, auditorium. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And then- yeah, it's pretty special, yeah. <laughs> that's remarkable, so you sing opera. No, no, I don't say I, I, it's just the background. Uh, so you're interacting with the principal uh, opera singers. Oh, um, oh, oh. You're, you're playing sort of characters. Oh, know. okay. Wow, um, I thought you had a long list of talents and now you just shared a whole nother one. <laughs> I, I, I stop out singing, you really don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> okay. I do want to hear you uh, read some of your poetry though, because it is really poignant and powerful and inspiring and it ranges the whole emotional gamut of what we experience as human beings. So if you'd like to share some of your poetry, that would be really cool right now. Okay. Um, so I've written two COVID poems. Um, this one, uh, PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. So back in London, I used to work for the Royal College of Nursing and also the Charter Society of Physiotherapy. So not as a clinician myself, um, but in policy and research and stuff. Um, but I've, I felt particularly affected when I, uh, by the news reports of healthcare workers coming down with COVID, you know, having worked with so many healthcare professionals in the past. Mm. So I wrote a poem uh, called PPE. Um, it was first published by a Chicago-based outfit called Please See Me, uh, and it's published online. And it's been subsequently published by the UK Sentinel Literary Quarterly, also mm. online. So, um, so if, if you like the poem, you, I'm sure you can, you can find them on you can find it on those websites. Okay. But, but here it is. Uh, okay. PP. Without it, I play a game of Russian roulette. Except this gun has more bullets, and my death, when it comes, will be slow and painful. A tragic treason behind the reason I came into this job in the first place, with a desire, a want, a need to help others. Some call it a vocation. I may leave this job for the same reason, that I stayed to help others, sick with this world-changing virus, COVID-19. We're described as being at war, assured that we will win the battle in the end, but at what cost? I'm not a soldier sent to fight with no bullets or boots, but the military metaphor holds. I'm on the front line of a different kind, a home front, a theater of engagement with the same danger, death, which has taken colleagues, comrades already. Roll call, first and foremost, people like you and me, mothers, daughters, fathers, sons, Husbands, wives, lovers, brothers, sisters, friends, nurses, porters, doctors, support workers, surgeons, healthcare assistants, specialists, technicians, locums, midwives, highly skilled professionals that our society needs to function effectively. Who can we rely on in this critical time of need? I'm a clinician, not an accountant nor a politician, but the personal has become very much the political for what can be more pressing than an existential threat. I go to work, I don't come home, hardly seems fair. So, a plea for PPE. Prime mm. Minister, over to you. Wow, that is so powerful. I think, uh, wow, Warren, that's really powerful. And I think it's really a beautiful example of how to channel all the emotions that we're having during the pandemic into our craft to mm -hmm. vent and express ourselves through our poetry, our short stories, our novels, our memoirs, our journals. Really mm -hmm. powerful example. Thank you for sharing that. And did you feel like a release when you expressed that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I was particularly affected because of my you know, his, history working in, in the healthcare sector, and so, and so reading about you know, you know, sort of healthcare workers' deaths on, on the news, 
yeah, it just really affected me. And so I felt I had to you know, do something. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, COVID you know, that sparks this sort of reaction. You know, I'm, uh, you know I mean, I've written poetry, uh, you know, both my parents are, you know, are dead now, but I've written poems to help me through the grieving process, you know, um, you know for, uh, for that. And, yeah. Uh, you know, one, of, one of them has been published. Um, uh, but, you know, some of it, it's, it's just it's just a personal thing for me just you know just to process what's going on yes yeah yes. but uh, but yeah but I'm, I'm um I, d I do think that it's important if you write poetry to try and um uh have a link between you know what's happening in the world mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and you're going to make poetry relevant you know, a lot of people are not interested in poetry you know they think it's you know too esoteric or you know, not relevant, but I, but I like writing sort of you know, poetry that that is relevant you mm -hmm. know, to what's going on. So you know, so, so you, know, I, you know, I've wrote about um, uh, uh, you know, elections. I've wrote about Donald Trump. Um, you, know, and, you know, things that I think are relevant and matter and pressing that upset me or yeah, you know, uh, make me angry or make me mad or you know, passionate. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, right. Something. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think it's important, you know. If you can yeah. um, make, you know, make your writing relevant, you know, yeah. and hope you, you can you can attract um, readers and and uh, you know, make make other people um, think. Oh, okay, yeah. Actually, I feel this a similar way about this particular subject. Maybe I'll try right. and write something. Like it too. Right. I love that. I love that writing is such a powerful and therapeutic tool for self-expression, healing, dealing, yes. coping, sorting through emotions. So, thank you for showing that brilliant example of it. Mm -hmm. um, now, let's lift it up a little bit and talk about purple flowers. Right. So. Um, in Sydney at the moment, uh, I mean, it's spring, we're, we're, we'll be coming into summer in the 1st of December. You're so Sydney... lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting winter. <laughs> I like winter, but uh, yeah, so, so in, in Sydney at the moment, uh, if you walk down the streets, the streets will be paved with uh, purple or lilac petals because the jacaranda trees are in full bloom. And um, but the yeah, the leaves fall, and it's, it's only really in November that, that they come out uh, for a short period of time, and yeah, and then but you you walk down the street and there's all these beautiful purple petals everywhere. Wow, oh, so pretty! If you have a chance um, to look it up, uh, I, he sent me a picture, and it's just spectacular. It looks like a wedding is about to happen, but it's just the sidewalk on the street. The trees are purple. The sidewalk is purple. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so I have a very short poem called Jacaranda Season. The jacaranda tree carpet bombs its lilac lethality on the concrete below, a deciduous delight, if only too brief, to the pedestrian foot soldiers marching through the purple parade of Sydney in spring. Ooh, I love that. That's just it's a very bite-sized poem, that one. <laughs> bite-sized I like it <laughs> that is awesome okay and then there's one more and it plays up on winter right yeah so, so I thought it'd be an appropriate one as you know, you're based in, in Detroit and you know, it's winter over there and yeah. I'm from the northern hemisphere myself and I'm a northern hemisphere December baby who misses winter <laughs> and northern winters believe it or not uh, so this one's called winter bites wearing a tabard of blood the robin stands as winter's warrior, watchful of the, as the snow serpent snakes its way across land no longer green, her frost fangs plunging deep into the skin of the earth. Casting her spell, winter bewitches, hugging as tightly and close as the death of strangled light, her kiss as cold and sharp as cracked crystal. As that pagan plant, the vampire mistletoe, insinuates and flatters her way into the homes and hopes of a thousand Christmas fools, Holly stabs like a pang of guilt, and all the while the white blanket covers the ground, coaxing the land to sleep. I love that! I love your verbs! Oh my gosh! Coaxing! <laughs> I just love that. Your words are awesome. Wow. 
wasn't that just so beautiful? I mean, I don't, I'm a summer baby and I love summer, but that was beautiful. And the blanket and the, oh, oh my gosh. And I just love the way writers can take an ordinary scene and in our own heads with our own vocabulary and visions, create this like symphony of words that is so delightful to listen to. Mm. And then when someone reads it for you and you don't have to do the work of reading, it's even better. <laughs> And then the British accent makes it all the more cool. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so speaking of, does anybody ever mistake you for Daniel Craig, the actor who played <laughs> 007 James Bond? Uh, I have had that a couple of times, uh, particularly when I've been wearing a suit and, and, and my hands are slightly, slightly shorter than, than it is now. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I have. And believe it or not, I did audition uh, for the role of James Bond. <laughs> For, for a stage play here in Sydney. Uh, I didn't get it uh, because they said they were looking for more of a Pierce Brosnan Bond rather than a James uh, a Daniel Craig. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> well, then let's go back to the writing part of acting. You won an award for one of your screenplays, right? And that's what we see over there? Yes, yes. Just I'm going to say. So yeah, so this yeah, uh, it's my screenplay captive. Uh, won best feature screenplay uh, at the Los Angeles Film Awards um, early on this year. Um, so, Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. Uh, hopefully, you'll be an Oscar next. Woo! Yes. <laughs> so, how many screenplays have you written, and what's that one about? Uh, so. I've probably I've written maybe five spec screenplays and a couple uh, on commission. Um, so it's I've written screenplays from other people's concepts uh, for them. Uh, none of them have made it to a full blown movie. So yeah, um, one got as far as I think shooting commenced, but uh, I don't think something happened. I'm not quite sure. But um, uh, and but the, the latest one. Um, which I'm still I'm working on another draft of it. So although I um, have a little trophy um, for an earlier draft, uh, I sent the screenplay to three coverage companies. Um, I got two recommends on the early draft, and then one came back saying, oh, it needs further development, the stretch is not right. Uh, and I wasn't completely sure myself, because uh, it's the first non-linear story that I've tried to write. Um, and it's part family drama, part um, hostage, kidnapping hostage drama. Uh, so, um, and it's set in uh, Edinburgh, London, and an unnamed African country. So I, so I thought the contrast between you know, the UK and, uh, and Africa would be visually quite stunning for a film. And... Um, but it jumped, the, the story jumps around a lot. So I wasn't really quite sure whether I got there, uh, got it right. And, um, and I, um, so that's what I'm doing with my third draft. I'm, I'm sort of restructuring it a little um, bit, as, okay. as well as working a little bit more on uh, on, on sort of character. But, mm -hmm. uh, but, it's, but it's one, you know, the earlier early drafts, of, uh, it's won three sc uh, screenwriting contests. Uh, oh, wow. So, yeah, smaller ones, so yeah, not the majors, um, but uh, but still, you know, I, I, it's encouraging. Yeah, when you get um, any sort of recognition for your work, it's a shot in the arm. That um, yeah, it's a confidence boost. That yeah, actually, yeah. Right yeah. And, and this story, captive, um, started out as a short story, then I turned it into a short play, um, which has been performed once here in Sydney. Uh, and then um, I'm so I, I sort of tend to write dark comedy or romantic comedy, and uh, my favorite romantic comedy. That's uh, the best. But, <laughs> well, I got some feedback <laughs> on the script from the Page Awards uh, once, uh, and it said um, I'd I'd really like to see this writer tackle a thriller, and uh, when and when I when I read the notes and I read that. I, what, what are they talking about? Because I write dark comedy or romantic comedy. Yeah, and it stayed with me and it's been like scratching away under my skin. I thought, right, okay, I'll write a thriller. 
so so <laughs> Cat, captive is my is my sort of thriller and oh, okay. uh, I, it, I do think it's a really good story oh. and um and, and some other people think it is too <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but the, the, you know, there's no limit to better. So I'm working on another draft, uh, hopefully, but you know, sort of, uh, the intention to uh, elevate it, make it better already than it is, make it more you know, sort of cohesive uh, whole. And but then, you, just, you just said there's no limit to better. There's that no is limit to powerful. I love that. There's no limit to better. The bad side about that is you could just keep writing something forever and ever and ever and never think it's good enough. So yeah. how do you <laughs> how do you that's, stop rewrite itis? Well, that's absolutely right. Yeah, when is the script finished? Um, well, yeah, hopefully when a producer makes it. <laughs> Hello, and writes a check. <laughs> yeah, but, but otherwise, yeah, I mean you have to draw a line somewhere and say, okay, yeah, yeah, this is finished for now. Uh, but yeah. If you know, particularly with a with a script, you know, if it ha if it's not getting picked up or it's not getting produced, you know, then you put it away for a bit and then revisit it and then think, oh yeah, I've got another idea now. Yeah. And, um, so I, I had an idea with this one, and uh, I I woke up because I was dreaming about it. And I, I woke up um, with the realization: what if one of my characters has lied about her upbringing? Mm. She's lied to the main character, and I thought mm. that changes everything. Ooh. Oh, no. oh no! Why did I have to have those thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I write the whole thing. Um, so I'm still playing around with that. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to introduce that particular uh, nugget uh, into it, but but I'm, I'm I'm not up to that yet. Mm -hmm. But also, I, um. And here's um, a possible potential piece of advice to your writers, if you haven't yes. thought of it already. Um, so I'm also working on a novel version of Captive. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've got roughly sort of 40,000 words into that, but I've, I've parked it for the moment while I revisit the structure of the screenplay. Um, but I've had some success where I've, uh, I had a piece of work that started out as a poem mm -hmm. and then I developed it into a short story. Okay. And then I've developed it into uh, a screenplay. Wow. Uh, and um, so and, and the, the same the same story, albeit different forms, mm -hmm. has been published. Uh, and a poem published, I've got a man tries to get back in. Uh, uh, the poem's published, the short story's published, and the short film's been made uh, yeah, of it. And it's the same story, but it's very different. You know, wow. Obviously, the poem is a very um, micro uh, version of it. Mm -hmm. And there's more layers and nuances in the film version and the short story version. But this is something that um, if you're, say, submitting a, you know, a short story and it's not getting any traction anywhere, then perhaps think, um, could this work as a play? or could it work as a screenplay mm -hmm. you know or, or if you start off writing a poem okay yeah the poem you know, could be you know if, if you like the the skeleton of the story and then could you put more flesh on the bones as it were by developing it in, into something longer um, because you might find that um uh you might not get published as a poem but it may get published as a short story you might wow. find a different audience yeah, wow. what a great idea thank you I don't know that most people consider that I started one of my novels as a screenplay and then I realized it was an outline of a book and I just wrote a book from it so that's brilliant brilliant but yeah. well, I think that um that idea about turning screenplays into a novel uh, I have read that advice on some screenwriting websites before and and it's essentially boils down to with a screenplay, you're talking about you know, 20, 22,000 words that you have for your screenplay. Mm -hmm. you know, so and with a novel, you know, depending on the genre, but you really need to have, say, at least 80,000 words. Mm -hmm. So you, you're, you're a quarter of a way there you know, um, mm -hmm. with the screenplay. And, and the screenplay, you know, what you write in the screenplay is, is only what you can see on screen and what right. you can hear. And right. Of course, 
with a novel, you have more freedom to write whole mm. chapters about what's going on in the character's head. Yes. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So so you do, so you're taking your screenplay and using that as a you know, the skeletal structure of mm -hmm. your book. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, I mean, it was so it's like it's you know, a bit like painting by numbers, but it's more difficult than that, obviously. But you know, but it's there, so, and that's what I'm trying to do myself. You know, you know with captive, you know, I've, you know, I've got the, I've got the screen, I've got the screenplay. I'm, I'm messing around with the structure a little bit in, in my, in my third draft. Mm -hmm. But once I'm happy with that, then I'm going to go back to the novel, and um, that's going to be my sort of major uh, project for the. Um, first half of next year. And oh, it's a, wow. It's a novel. I love that. That's so powerful. And congratulations on your success. You're featured in our second anthology of international short stories. And yes, thank you. <laughs> and you are also going to be featured in our upcoming third annual international anthology of short stories. And so we're very proud of you for that and making these powerful, positive contributions to the literary realm. Um, I could have the anthology to my collection of uh, books that I'm in. Wow. So what is the secret to your success to getting recognized and awarded, celebrated, published? Uh, I mean, first off, I'd say it's only moderate uh, success. Um, you know, I'd say I'm sort of down here. Um, I, you know, I really want to be a, you know, appear as a writer, but I'm sort of down here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had some success. You know, I've, I've had poetry published. Uh, I've had close to you know, almost 30 poems published online or uh, in journals in Britain, Ireland, Australia, in America. Mm -hmm. um, I have been successful in getting a collection of, of my poems uh, published, which um, remains uh, a goal of mine. Um, I, I've had sh uh, short plays um, that have won contests that have been um, produced in Australia, in Britain, and in America, in New York. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the screenplay contest wins. Um, I've had short screenplays produced into films, but as I said earlier, I haven't, I haven't yet been successful in having a full-length fe feature film made, but uh, yeah, that's one of my goals as well. And um, it's just you know perseverance. You know, I, you, know, you, I, you know, you don't have to be the, the best writer in the world, however you, you judge that, mm -hmm. but you do need to um, yeah, have a lot of perseverance mm -hmm. and not not get distracted. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, there's a lot of rejections uh, yeah, that will come your way as a writer, yeah. and indeed as an actor as well. Uh, and you've just got to grow a thick skin and you know just shrug it off, dust yourself down, shrug it off. And, yeah, 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 and, and yeah, just just get on with it. Uh, so I think you know persistence. You know, have faith in your ability. Uh, believe in your voice. Yes. Uh, yeah, and yeah, you. You have a unique perspective on the world, but nobody else has. Right. Yes, yeah. yes, and, yes. You know, you, 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 you know, you find a way to sort of interpret the world and communicate your views on, on the world. And yes. You, know, you find an audience. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just, just keep going. And don't, don't be afraid to put, put work out there. Yeah, sure, you'll, you'll get an avalanche of rejections. Uh -huh. and, and, yeah, sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, that's hard. Uh, but you know, you just, you know, just it's okay. You mm -hmm. know, you know just, just keep going. You know, and um, you know, you know, learn from it. And you don't have to agree, have to agree with everything uh, somebody says about your work. Um, yeah. Great um, advice. Great advice. Oh my gosh, this is so cool because you're from England, and our guest tonight on our vidcast, Ten Thousand Things That You Need to Know to Write and Publish a Book, which is coming up in thirty minutes. Our, auth our attorney, who's going to talk about the legalities of writing, actually got his master's degree from uh, Cambridge University in England. So, so fun. This is like the European Australian night. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. If you're getting value out of writer talks and you're feeling inspiration and if you feel in entertained, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. We'd really love it if you'd subscribe to the channel so you get a notification every time we upload a new video and go live. So for right now, I just want to thank you so much, Warren, for this tremendous 30 minutes of inspiration, poetry, insight, guidance, advice, 
really solid content that you've shared with our viewers who are writers and hopefully can achieve some of the successes that you have uh, achieved with your writing and awards and following your dream and never giving up, keeping your eye on that star. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's been a real pleasure, Elizabeth. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> You're welcome, Warren. I am going to be rooting for you to win that Oscar, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, enjoy the springtime in Australia while we are going to enjoy the snowfall here in the United States. And uh, I absolutely yeah. wish you the best. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much. All the best for you writers out there. Keep going. Yeah. Yes, thank you. All right, have a great night. And thank you so much for joining us tonight on Writer Talks. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks again, Warren.